Hello again, this is Ben Hitchcock Cross talking to you today uh, from a, what you call it, the old uh, clubhouse, I guess you could say. Um, I just got off the phone with Amy Russell. She is the section chief of uh, the uh, investigators. So she's the head of the investigative section. Now, if you recall, uh, Teresa Falderon has two complaints pending. Uh, one is for the uh, Pew Pew um, going after her, uh, sending her this voicemail, uh, retaliatory voicemail, uh, while the deposition is supposed to be going on. The second one is um, the main employment discrimination complaint. Okay, so um, as you may know, all of the ALJs, except Laura Amundsen, have uh, recused themselves from the hearing of that case. They did that with uh, 13 days to go. Um, they knew about the conflict with Calvin Furman for six to eight months, and uh, they decided to only do it on the day of uh, Calvin Furman's, um, let's say it was his committee for a position as a permanent ALJ. Okay, so... We are sitting here and we are um, having her main case be held up. It's been three months now or so be by um, Amundsen and um, Maria Selsor. We have just gotten an email from Amundsen saying that she has read the file enough to compare the two complaints, and she knows that they're similar enough that it would be a waste of time to do anything other than to hold waste, uh, continue to waste my client's time and hold off on the, the hearing. That, of course, again, was 13 days. People were subpoenaed and uh, witnesses ready to go. Um, just shocking. So we uh, withdraw the complaints. And, of course, you know, we withdraw it under protest. And we put in there that the purpose of withdrawing this complaint is that um, we're only doing it because of the actions of Maria Selsor and Laura Amundsen, and uh, they're illegally holding this case back uh, is what it, uh, is the reason that we're withdrawing our complaint. So I got an email today from uh, Amy Russell saying that she was refiled a complaint it was withdrawn, as far as I knew, in the not just looking in the, the case portal, the case file there, the online file, it was withdrawn, this was done. I had sent a message out to this fact saying it was done. <laughs> and lo and behold, about an hour later, uh, same as yesterday, I get an email saying, oops, you're, uh, we, un we instituted your file again. And Amy Russell claims that this is entirely her idea, uh, but the, that a, a complaint has to be voluntary, it cannot be involuntary. And, I, you know, I agreed with her. I absolutely thought that it would be a wonderful world if uh, the government officials did not uh, purposely delay uh, hearings. That would be fantastic, but I don't think we're in such a place. Um, so we went on to discuss what the law is, and I can tell you, very quickly, it's it's not a law, it's a rule. DWD 218-03, right in the beginning, complaints, and then sub-7, withdraws. And there's basically two things that need to happen. A withdrawal needs to be in writing and it needs to be signed. And after that happens, the department shall withdraw the complaint, and it may be under prejudice, uh, with prejudice, unless indicated otherwise. Okay, sounds great. So we went through that, and I explained to her that when the rule says the department shall, then that means they have to do it. And she says, well, it can't be involuntary. So I say, well, just help me out here. Show me where in the rules it says anything about being voluntary. She was not able to do that. And she just said, well, it's just something about complaints here that they need to be voluntary. And I'm like, great, show me a policy procedure. I'm not just going to take your word for it. But that's where she left it on that. Where, of course, we weren't done by a long shot. Um, I then explained to her the history of the whole case as I, I just went out uh with, for, with you and explain to her um, her part in, I guess, uh, holding off 
uh, Miss Falaron's day in court. Okay, so then I'm sitting here to myself saying, well, what can we do to go, and we go around this a couple times, what can we actually put in a complaint that will be, uh, that will, you will accept, okay? And um, because she's, her, her statement is that, and this is, again, the state of Wisconsin is telling me that I cannot file a complaint with Maria Selsor and Amundsen's name and stating that the reason that I'm withdrawing the complaint is because of their actions, which is the reason that we're withdrawing the complaint. Okay, they've told me categorically in writing that I cannot do that. I've called them up for clarification. They explained it to me. I'm telling you now what they told me. So then I said, okay, so can we just take the words out under protest? How about that? And she said, yeah, you take the words out from under protest. Okay. And, um, you know, I would say she's getting more and more tired of being in this conversation, and I can understand it, but she is, by all means, uh, answering my question. She's saying that her supervisor is Matt White, that nobody assisted her in making this decision. She is the sole person who came to the conclusion that, um, and again, it's straight up, you can look it up. 218-037, the department shall withdraw the complaint. She didn't, and I, we went, I said, hey, madam, I don't understand why it is that you are not looking up the rule and citing that other than your position, because that's what she kept citing was her position, meaning I'm the section chief, and what are you going to do, sue me? I mean, which is essentially what the position is, Right. We got some shedding dogs for sure. So, um, and this is, you know, when we talk about the Chevron case, uh, when we talk about, and I'm not as familiar with, I've read again through about half of them. I can't, I had to like Google their names like five times. I was not even thinking about the parties because um, I'm reading summaries at the end. Um, but here in Wisconsin, that case the Wisconsin Supreme Court already ruled that administrative uh, agencies get no deference with regard to their interpretation of the law. That's called Tetra Tech. That one I got down cold. And that's been affirmed a couple of times. I'll tell you, because you will ask, that the, was, the Department of Workforce Development tried to just continue and pretend like they didn't hear that, um, but that didn't work out for them very well. That they didn't hear that their... Uh, we're no longer being deferent. The courts were no longer assuming a standard of deference to administrative agencies. This was Wisconsin. Uh, that first case is about three or four years ago. It was affirmed again. I mean, definitely before the red to blue shift that we have now. Um, but still, I think it's it's pretty clear and settled. Um, and certainly <clears throat> going to be hard pressed to overput, uh, overrule after the Supreme Court decision there. So, um, and, and again, it's decisions like this, which is, well, I see what the rules say, but I'm going to use my positionality here to enforce uh, made rules that I made up in my own mind. Or And, and again, I'm highly suspicious. If you take her at her word, her position is that she um, created this concept and it had nothing to do whatsoever that I sent an email to Amundsen and Selsor an hour before that saying, you guys have a problem. We already withdrew this stuff. Let's go. Where's our hearing? And let's talk about the timing of these things because I want some public records. That's going to indicate where these uh, documents that you sent out now came out because they keep looking to be in reaction to what I sent out to you, which has been the pattern almost uh, exclusively uh, with my interactions at the ERD. Again, we, something, either something in the news or we send a, you know, email saying you guys have violated the law for this reason. And then they come up and try to make up, uh, create some kind of fact situation that goes against us. So, um, I, you know, was as civil as I could be with Amy Russell. I appreciate uh, the investigators are generally a different breed and it's generally a different office. She's a supervisor. I've known her as an investigator for many years. 
um, and I certainly have nothing against her. I, it's my firm belief that uh, she was put up to this. She told me, and this is, again, her story, um, and I don't feel that she's a liar. I just feel that there's bureaucratic pressures um, that uh, she learned of this some hours ago from her um, investigator. Now, whether what... Do you, the <laughs> You have to understand that I told the invest, I had conversation with the investigator about all these issues and the investigator personally changed the form for us. But this is after we said, hey, and we submitted this form and demanded it to be, uh, to get things moving along. They overruled the uh, investigator, said we had to use the form. And I want to be clear because this is what Amy Russell is saying here. This is what the state of Wisconsin is saying, that they will not accept Teresa's father uh, withdrawal of her complaint if it contains the word under protest or if it mentions Maria Selsor or Lauren Amundsen. And I mean, I, I again, how they think that that is not a violation of my client's free speech rights, I do not understand. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Again, I hope Matt White is watching. Um, I sure I will have to provide him a link to this. Um, but you know, we've 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 since lost hope, giving up, uh, having faith uh, that cooler heads will prevail. Um, but ultimately here, this is just another action by the state of Wisconsin to protect other workers uh, for the state of Wisconsin. And, and again, what did I hear from Amy Russell? And this, this is the clear statement here. This is not an arena. This is a form. And again, I made it very plain to her that the form is not controlling, that the rule controls. And that only two things are required, it be in writing and it be signed. She confirmed to me that what we had was in writing and was signed. And then she refused to follow the rule further by processing the withdrawal. She stated categorically that she would only process the withdrawal if we removed Maria Selsor's name and we removed... Um, Laura Amundsen's name, and we did not state that we were filing this complaint under protest. Now, again, in my opinion, she's violating the law straight out that says the rule. They're violating their own administrative rule. But more importantly, my client has, because it says written, written expression, no problem, and signed, my client has, has the absolute ability to withdraw her complaint for any reason or no reason at all, even a bad one. All it has to be is written. And my client absolutely has the right to have the rule be enforced. And bureaucrats cannot make up rules based on their feelings. So... Um, Again, it seems to be quite pervasive at uh, the Equal Rights Division, um, this uh, decision-making by feelings. And again, what's the problem with decision-making by feelings is it's not a rule-based environment. You may have the greatest feelings in the world or you may not. I'm not willing to rely on your feelings. My clients are not willing to rely on your feelings. We demand a system based upon the rules that are written. We demand that you do your job. Thank you very much. Stick with us. We'll keep you informed.